Hi, I'm Aldo. Welcome to Plays the Thing, the channel where I share my experiences prepping and playing tabletop role playing games. This is the second play session report on the Shadow Dark campaign that I'm running. Shadow Dark, of course, is the dark fantasy role playing game written by Kelsey Dion and published through her company, Arcane Library. So, this second play report is a little bit on a reflection on a session that was not altogether to my liking. And first, let me say this. I think my players had fun. I think it was a successful session overall, but from a game master's perspective, at least from my perspective, it wasn't everything that I wanted it to be. And there were certain things that I did um, in the course of play that I wish I hadn't done. And um, I think I think part of that began with the level of preparation um, that I had going into the game, which was not that much, right? Um, I had already run that first successful session, um, and that was all, you know, done basically, um, you know, uh, right after character generation, right? So we created characters and then jumped into the session, and it went well, and that's all fine and dandy. I'd made some adjust adjustments uh, to the situation based on some of the character backgrounds as I already described in the previous videos, and it went very well. I like that. However, ideally, I would have spent a little more time before this session um, looking at what the players had given me, looking at what had happened in the first session, and thinking a little bit more about the situation so that I'd have more in my mind going in about what was possible, what wasn't possible, what was going to happen, what were certain motivations for certain characters. And I didn't do that. I also wish that I had gone in and actually fleshed out um, with a map, um, uh, 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 Warden, Wardenwood, right? Which is where the, the players started. And I didn't do that either. Now, I didn't do it because it's the end of the semester and I'm a teacher and I was caught up with you know, writing exams and grading exams and doing all the other things that go with that. So, right. So this is an example of life getting in the way and me being unwilling to cancel a session or postpone a session when I don't have enough time to prep all the things that I want to prep for it. I'm glad that I did that because if I, if I, if I get into the habit of, um, of holding back because I'm not quite ready, then I'll never play. Right. Um, so I'm glad that I, that I did that. But I think it is worth looking at, you know, the consequences of, 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 of playing in that way and um, pointing out the things, the specific things that, that went wrong because of that lack of preparation. Um, also, I'm trying to remember, there's a, there's a little bit of a challenge in this because, um, I I'm doing these several weeks after fact again because I've been so busy with everything and then the holidays kicking in and everything that that I I'm I'm trying to remember my process and I have a pretty good memory for this sort of thing but I in this case I think I'm getting a little fuzzy I don't remember when we started the game how much of a recap I gave the players I just don't remember I usually give a recap and I'm usually pretty detailed in that recap. But I, I think in this session, I may have parachuted the players in um, with less of a recap than I usually do. Either that or they were not as focused as, as they, they usually are, right? Because um, there's also a player side of this, right? That when we started play, as I'll describe in a moment, when we started play, I, I feel like something i don't know something something didn't quite gel it didn't quite flow from the previous session through this session at the beginning and um i don't know i, I i'm left scratching my head a little bit about that i don't remember what the factors were i also don't remember how much time there was between this session and the first session so maybe memory was just not as good as it could have been for folks involved I'm not sure. But anyway, with with those things aside, let me just jump in and start describing what the players did and what happened and how I 
responded as game master um and and then i'll point out moments along the way where i think things didn't go according to plan all right so we found our players um coming back from their initial jaunt into the wood if you recall and you can watch session the the session one play report they had figured out that there was um a kindly old woman out in the wood that wasn't so kindly and had introduced some sort of poison into the community which had made several people sick and they were progressing to what was probably going to be death um as a consequence and they figured out that this one woman was out there and the players took a jaunt the player characters took a jaunt out into the wood to try to find her they did not find her instead they ran into um, a bunch of bandits got into an altercation with them barely got out alive um as their numbers the numbers of the bandits were just too great they managed to to um, hide in the wood while the bandits passed them by and then realizing that they weren't equipped for a night in the wood they returned back to wardenwood um to to rest up to report dot 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 right the reason i'll pause there is because it's interesting i think from a game master's perspective what I assumed they were going to do was because they seem so driven the the first session, right? That they seem so driven to find uh, this old woman. Um, that that um, I I just assumed that it would it would flow from there, right? That they were going to go back to Wardenwood, rest, report, and then go back out with a purpose. Um, Maybe I shouldn't have made that assumption. Maybe I shouldn't have made that assumption. Um, because what happened when they returned to Wardenwood at the start of play was that, um, and let me go, I'm going to go to our map now. Let's see. Um, give me one second here. I can get to the the map and like or in the uh, where i can point to the characters okay there we are so um what happened when they returned to wardenwood was i said okay so what are you all going to do oh and by the way we also had a new player my friend jen um joined us for this session and she made this character let me point her out uh this is githa who is a halfling uh thief if I remember correctly, yeah, she's a halfling thief with a ur with an urchin background, and we we thought we would keep this just very you know um, very simple. That you know she's back in Wardenwood. She's been there for a little while. She's a part of the community. She might be a little bit transient, maybe making her way between uh, Wardenwood and Marin's Hold, um, but that basically. Um, she, you know, whatever the players were up to, she has enough of a relationship with them and enough, enough of an investment in in Wardenwood and enough of an interest in 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 finding odd and strange and potentially uh, profitable things um, out there that pretty much when they would come back with some sort of report that she would just say, that's interesting and tag along, right? We weren't going to belabor that, um, you know, her motivation, her place in all of this very much. Jen was totally cool with that. So we had the party return to Wardenwood, and my assumption was that they would go to the tavern, report um, to the community, since the tavern serves as kind of like a community center we established. And, and since um, some of their friends are actually there, that that's what they would do. But they didn't all do that, right? Um, Asher, my friend Mario's Asher character, Asher went straight to his hut, and just hit out there. Um, Rowena, um, who normally uh, would have gone to the tavern, but she had suffered an arrow shot um, when she was facing the bandits. So she's like, you know, I don't think that Rowena, Lauren, Rowena's player said, I don't think that she would go straight to the tavern. I think she'd go to her house and, and recuperate. Um, and most of the other characters just kind of dispersed to different places. They didn't go and report right away. 
And um, Brendan, when we did go back to the tavern, but, but rather than report and make a big deal of what they had faced out there in the wood, just donned his, uh, you know, the apron again and started just kind of helping around the, the, the tavern. And it just seemed, and this is not something that lasted for a very long period of time, but it just seemed like when we got into play, that there wasn't an immediately an immediate following through with the urgency of the previous play session. It was almost to me as a game master, it was almost like the characters just kind of like reset and said, okay, well that didn't work. So let's just go about our, our lives without being focused on the issue at hand. And I, I was initially a little bit uh, thrown by this. Um, I, I, this is something else that I kind of messed up in the session. I, as I, as I explained in the previous uh, play report, you know, in, in, um, in, uh, in, in Shadow Dark, you roll initiative and you go through character actions in that way. And in this particular session as a whole, except for combat, I didn't stick to that as much as I did in the first session. It was a little bit more like we were just kind of freewheeling all the actions. I think, if memory serves, that I did start with the initiative order. But when I went through the initiative order, it had all those characters just go and just start doing mundane things or just um, not not kind of engaging. And when we went to, to, okay, so you guys go and you heal and you recover and you sleep and the morning comes, what do you do? It seemed like people were going to continue through their kind of mundane lives without again responding to the situation that was out there in the world um again this did not last very long um ultimately renwick jason's character renwick the wizard did kind of step in and say all right guys let's go we've got we've got this this uh this problem to solve with this old woman let's let's go let's figure out a plan i want to go back out there and figure things out and so then the party did start to kind of come together and start to come you know start to come up with some sort of plan of action right which did involve going out into the wood and i'm going to get to that in a moment i'm, going to, I'm only going to talk about this for a very brief moment of time because it, it 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 brings me to a question about me as game master right i am trying to jam more and more and more in a way that doesn't say like hey what we're here to do is the plot that i have established right i've been kind of in this mode for years now but i don't i don't need them to do certain things in order to get to some uh pre-plotted conclusion i actually really don't know where things are gonna go right so I asked myself the question when they started kind of just kind of meandering and not paying attention to uh, or not doing what I expected them to do in terms of their actions. I, f I wish that I had spent a little bit more time prepping the village so that I could have seeded it with more personalities and more situations that they could kind of tap into and go wherever they want to go, right? Like, like I, I uh, part of that is sitting, like saying, like you know, that that was kind of like a failing on on me as a game master for not kind of uh, doing that and walking in with the expectation that they would do the thing. Right? The other part of me though says, no, there was a situation that was present that they had engaged that. They were in the process of engaging, and it is fair for me to expect that the characters in that situation wouldn't just kind of meander off, right? Um, that that it's not about reaching some sort of, you know, uh, pre-planned event or encounter or scene that I have in mind, because I didn't, I don't think I had that expectation in mind. But that I think it was maybe a fair expectation of me to think that their characters would follow through with the same kind of um, urgency that they had before because they had exhibited it before, right? And that the so that the maybe the problem in terms of my way of setting this up wasn't me um, 
trying to railroad them in a particular direction. I think they had already gone in a particular direction. In fact, they had kind of two things that they could pursue now, because he had the issue of the bandits, which at this point they didn't know that, but it was unrelated to the issue of the old woman. And you've got the issue of the old woman. And so certainly there were two situations in play. They could have followed either one. I I didn't know, but the fact that they chose to initially not be particularly responsive to either one, given their previous actions, left me kind of treading water for a moment until Renwick kind of stepped in and said, We've got to go and do this. And um, I don't know. It just kind of felt like maybe Jason as player saying, we've got to get back on track, back on the rails. And I don't want to run a railroad, you know, but the idea that this player came in and shepherded everybody towards the module. And I'm really not trying to run this game as the module. I'm trying to run it as the setting with situations. So I don't know. I was a little ambivalent about that. I, I wasn't judging my players. You hear me musing now about whether it was all sorts of different factors that had gotten in the way of that. Um, but I'm kind of like thinking, you know, I needed to prep the, maybe reestablish the situations. Be a, Maybe it was something about the way that I opened um, the session that I didn't remind them enough of the pre-existing situation that they were in. Or if really I just needed to kind of let that go a little bit and and prep more options uh, for this to be a little bit more freewheel. So, so anyway, there was that. So let's get to what they actually did um, after Renwick kind of got them on track. And this is pretty straightforward, right? There's actually, this is a relatively short session. Um, so this is going to be a relatively short play report, I think. Um, I brought them back to this region map, and I said, look, you guys have explored, and I'm pinging it here. I hope you guys can see it, but I'm pinging a hex right now. And I'm, I told them, okay, that's the hex that you guys explored the day before. So what's the plan going to be? Are you guys going to go back to that hex and continue to explore it, or are you guys going to push on? And after some measure of deliberation, they said, okay, well, I think what we're going to do is that we're going to um uh push into they're gonna go to that hex kind of go north and then um uh maybe go into this hex here or this this hex here and they were going to also keep in mind you know depending on what they saw when they explored that first hex and they were also going to be looking for signs of the the bandits right and the way that they set themselves up is that um, Ursula, right, our, our half-orc uh, uh, fighter who has the ranger background, is going to basically be in the lead doing her ranger thing. And also, um, Rowena was going to have her moth flying about um, looking for, uh, for things from kind of an aerial perspective um, as they were marching into, into this hex. And because um, she has like a, like a familiar that is a moth. Right. And um, the other very specific thing that I got from from Renwick was that he was going to be understanding that they're already kind of in a demon wood, that he was going to be looking for signs that the forest was um, maybe, you know, more corrupted, you know, areas where the corruption might seem more great. Um, so they did that. I had them make their roles. And in the case of Furzala, I just revealed some information to her. Um, and that was that she, she found the bandit, uh, camp as they were exploring that hex. Um, they were, they were no longer there, but she found where they had been. And she was able to determine that the bandits had continued down this road, but in the opposite direction of what they, where they were headed. So there was a little bit of a discussion about whether or not they should follow up on that, but they, they pretty quickly decided that they wanted to remain focused on the, the trying to find the little old lady. Um, I told uh, Renwick that um, he, I had to make an arcana roll and I told him that um, there was a side of the road to the, to the West where there did seem to be, um, uh, you know, a stronger hint of, of, of corruption. Right. Uh, I, I described some uh, trees that were particularly misshapen on the side of the road. Um, 
and describe some other aspects of them that led him to believe after making an arcana roll that maybe that was an area of the force that was especially tainted. And I got to tell you, I, I, I think, again, there's, there's a lack of preparation on my part, especially in sharing some of those details that makes me feel like I was scripting this a little bit too much because it wasn't that I was trying to lead them anywhere, but I wanted their, their suggested, um, actions in the back of my mind i wanted their their not their suggested actions or take it the actions they took i wanted to reward them with having uh some consequence right and so there are a couple of moments in this where i did that where where they're like okay i'm looking for something in particular and i'm making a role and i hadn't determined that there was more corruption there but i was like okay well he made a role and he's looking for something so i want to reward him so i'll say that but i knew that in saying that Maybe there's no reason for there being more corruption there. But in saying that, I knew that it would lead him towards um, towards uh, Drusilla's uh, hut, which is or cottage, which is you know the the little old lady. <clears throat> and and I didn't plan to do that, and I I didn't say oh I need to steer them in that direction. But effectively, I feel like I did steer them in that direction. It was more the type of thing where it's like. I'm going to do this. And I'm like, oh, I want to reward them. So then I just kind of say something, um, that throw it out there. And then, and then the moment I say it, I'm like, man, do I even really have a reason for having said what I just said? And I feel like I'm leading them a little bit. So anyway, so they decided that they were going to push in, even though they knew that pushing into this hex here, which is where that uh, perceived corruption was they were going to push into the hex that I'm pinging right now in the map, which meant that they would have to stay right uh, a, a night in in the forest. So, as they were pushing in there, there was something else that I did because it started to be cut to to get to nightfall, and they 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 I kept rolling for wandering monsters, but they didn't none of them manifested um and they finally kind of worked through this area of the wood and they found um they found uh a woman's well they found a, a person's tracks that then changed into something that had a much larger stride so they they knew that um what they were ended up following, right? Because Ursula picked up the, the, the again, the tread of uh, a modestly sized uh, person, a small person kind of walking through the wood that they were had delved into. And then that turned into this much more inhuman kind of stride and, and, and print. Um, and at that point, they, they knew that, who they were pursuing was more than just human, right? And when they broke into a clearing, they saw this pretty little cottage, well, plain cottage, but with these pretty uh, purple flowers uh, planted out in the front and kind of surrounding the house. And there was a little, you know, a little smoke coming from the chimney. And um, it was this kind of quaint little cottage out in the woods. Again, I am kind of beating myself because another thing that I didn't get to do really was to think a lot about what Drusilla's cottage would look like or her hut would look like or her abode would look like. So I kind of just popped that out of my imagination and dropped it into the setting. Um, I didn't have maps prep for this. I was just, I'm, I'm going to wing it, right? Um, and that's what came out in the moment that I'm winging it. And aesthetically, I'm thinking later, man, I there are choices that I would have made differently here, right? but whatever, that's, that's what I described. So at that point they stayed hidden. Most of the parties ended up, you know, it was nighttime at this point. Um, and uh, my friend, Andrew, who was playing Kraith, um said, you know, I'm going to be listening to see if I hear anything. All of them were doing different things, mostly observational, but Kraith had said specifically and had been saying it for a while. I'm going to be listening. I'm going to be listening. I'm going to be listening. I'm like, man, I want to reward that too. Now, um, Drusilla, the, the kindly old woman who's really a, a, a will hag, um, uh, had uh, a relationship going, a, a situation going of her own with another NPC in the setting. This is in her description. This is something that I knew because of the description. 
And uh, that is, I'm not going to go into the details of that relationship because it's not yet known, but, um, but she had a working relationship with a werewolf. And so when Andrew kept saying like, oh, I'm going to, I want to be listening for something. And again, I wanted to reward their efforts. So like the third time he asked me and I hadn't given him anything with all the other times that he'd asked me if he'd heard anything. I was like, ah, you, he made a roll. I'm like, you hear, and then, you know, you hear a, a wolf in the distance, right? Uh, a wolf howling in the distance. And again, I had not determined, like, I didn't, I feel like I just threw that in there to, to reward a player action without thinking too much about what was going on with the werewolf and the hag at this particular moment so i felt like i just like threw that in because it was in her situation as stated in the adventure and i was just kind of like you know scrambling to provide things for people when they were kind of asking them because my prep was not good enough right um so almost when i said it i regretted it because then i was like oh man i don't really know that i have something for that i would have felt much better about that if i had rolled a werewolf on a random encounter table right or if i had had a separate kind of table for things the hag might be doing this evening and had rolled a result randomly on that or something like that something something that it would have felt less scripted just kind of an unfolding situation that was happening as we were going that's not what i did but whatever now that i mentioned that the wolf was howling out in the wilderness and i felt like i had now it was in play and now we we're going to see what was happening. I didn't really know for sure what was happening. So anyway, they, they were watching this, this hut. They were a little worried about going in. They didn't know what to do. So then our new player, Githa, the halfling, our new player character, Githa, the, the halfling thief, um, used her halfling ability to turn invisible. And she ran across the, the uh, you know, kind of like the, the clearing where the cottage was. And she got to the building and looked inside and she saw this old woman. Um, actually, oof, I didn't describe her as old woman. It was, she saw the hag, right? Drusilla as her proper hag form, the wheeled hag, just like, you know, like brewing something in, in a cauldron and picking up ingredients and, and I, I described her as being looking like she was um, kind of in a hurry, right? Like she was quickly working on something. Um, and I said that she looked a little bit frustrated and angry. And stuff. So then she then ran around to, uh, Githa ran around to the back of the cottage to see if there was a back door that she can sneak in. And she failed her, 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 uh, her uh, thievery role, which meant that she made noise and I had, because she had to, um, the, the, the door happened. I rolled randomly to see if the door was locked. It was locked. He tried to pick the lock. He made noise. She only had one round left on her, on her halfling invisibility. So she wasn't sure what to do. And, um, I, I described that, you know, she heard like, like, you know, movement, um, coming towards the door like the clomping of big feet that then kind of like settled down into like just like like regular like human footfall um and so githa decided that she was going to take off her invisibility right and play try to play the situation so she was like looking like lost and innocent and when the when drusilla opened the door and saw her she's like oh i'm lost in the wood and you know my my uh you know, bandits attack my my caravan, and I don't know what to do. And she tried to pretend. I think she was like a little girl, right, or something like that, uh, like a human little girl. And then she was like, "Oh, you poor dear, come on in," and brought her into the house. It's like, "Oh, I'm sure that we can find you. Have to stay the night and whatever." And there was this kind of like dueling of you know the the witch kind of like drawing her in and putting her in a threatening situation, and Githa like blocking and pairing all the kind of like would you like me to would you you know do this for you or do that oh no i don't need that it was actually a lot of fun to play i remember the interactions being a lot of fun to play jen was playing really well off of the old one it was my favorite thing that i think that happened in the whole thing in the meantime the rest of the party's out in the clearing like 
do we go in do we go in do we go in what do we do what do we do what do we do i don't know i don't know i don't know and um rowena's moth rowena sent her moth to kind of look through the windows and stuff and the moth came back and reported and at that point they're like okay we need to go in because we don't know how how long this is gonna you know how long githa is gonna be safe and githa might have been actually in trouble earlier because I, there was a cleaver that was in a table that the that the witch was moving towards and at this point she's appeared in her kindly guise because she had morphed into her kindly old lady guise as she went to answer the door or to investigate the door that was being picked um and she was moving towards it at one point and githa said something about like you know i uh, you know, my people are in Wardenwood and I can get you in at that point. She's like, oh, oh, so it looked like possibility of using Githa as a way into Wardenwood in some way uh, was appealing to Drusilla. So so Drusilla stood down from her initially kind of threatening kind of posture, not threatening, but the 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 low key threat that was swimming under the pleasantries, right, that were being exchanged back and forth. And she seemed to switch to like, oh, we need to keep you healthy and you need to get some good rest because I'll take you to Wardenwood tomorrow. And then you can, you know, um, introduce me and blah, blah, blah. So that was going on. But once the moth reported back about what was going on, the party decided that they were going to act. And at that point, like uh, Brendan, right? Sir Brendan, just brother Brendan, whatever, just strode out of the, of the, of the wood made his way straight to the door the other fighters in the party kind of followed after him um i think drusilla decided not just uh, not Drusilla. rowena decided that she was going to go around back um but then they just kicked down the door right and at that point drusilla turned from kindly old woman to wield hag right and a ferocious fight ensued right now they outnumbered her by a great number but uh Wield hag is a pretty powerful enemy and um uh i think she she uh you know uh, did significant damage to several of them before they took her down to the ground and brendan was on top of her like threatening her uh you know uh at one point um and she then used her power that allows her to like you know, it's a it's like a breath attack or something. I forget. I, mean, I don't have the stats in front of me, but it steals the hit points of one to add to, to, from an enemy to add to her own. So she did that to Brendan and took him down. So he's making death saves. She gets back up. She's clawing at the others. It was a pretty brutal fight. It was a very satisfying fight. But in the end of that, um, um, um Ursula managed to take um, uh, the hag down for good. Um, and, uh, and at that point, the party started to kind of search the, the, the room. Oh, one thing I should say, there was a parlaying moment because Drusilla failed her, her, her morale check. She didn't have any reward to run, but she basically gave up the fight right before she was taken down. And she said, don't kill me. You know, I'm your only chance to survive against the werewolf that's on its way here. Right. Cause at that point I am like, all right, I have this already, you know. I have this already in, 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 uh, I have the werewolf in queue already. I've introduced it into the situation. So now I need to make good on that threat. She's like, I'm your only chance against a werewolf who's coming here to see me tonight. And they were like, are you serious? They briefly spoke back and forth. And it was Renwick, I think, that was like, she's just going to tell it to kill us. So then that's when Ursula took her down. So anyway, when the fight was over, then they knew that this werewolf was coming. And so there was a number of things that happened. Um, I rolled randomly to see how long it would take the werewolf to arrive. I um, mean, it was a long time. I think I rolled something like 10 rounds or something like that. Um, they did a number of things. First, um, Rowena identified the the purple flowers in front of or surrounding the house as wolves. Right. Um, and that was actually not planned by me and it was not in the adventure. I had described purple flowers. Uh, Dan, Sir Brendan's player, pulled out one of his books and said, do they look like this? And showed me some purple flowers. It, I'm like, yeah, sure. Why not? That actually makes sense. Wolf's Bane is purple. We'll say that they're Wolf's Bane. It just makes sense. You know, I described it. He 
backed it up with like a more specific question. It made sense actually that Drusilla would have some sort of protection against this werewolf herself. So we made it wolf's bane. They took Drusilla's body. They threw it out in front of the cottage. They then barricaded the doors. Um, they, um, uh, the fighters got ready to defend the cottage. They also, some of the other players looted the cottage and we rolled random treasure and they found like a really nicely made longsword, not magical, but a really nicely made longsword that has some very specific descriptions on it. They found a few other things, probably things that Drusilla had like cobbled together from previous adventures and, you know, all that. And, uh, and then the last thing that they found that was important was that between um, Renwick and uh, Rowena, they were able to identify, um, one, that Drusilla was brewing more of that poison, but two, they found all the ingredients that they needed to be able to create an antidote. And one of those ingredients were these little silver flowers that, that Drusilla had harvested from somewhere. Again, those are actually in the setting. Um, mentioned in a completely different situation. Um, but uh, but there were these little silver flowers that you can grind uh, down and introduce into the creation of an antidote for the poison. So they, the two of them, got busy. And it was really cool because it was really complimentary. It was um, uh, Renwick couldn't have done it without Rowena and vice versa, based in the way that the the ruling that I made in the moment and the their particular backgrounds and the way that I had them work together. And then just the way the role worked, because I think in the end, we said Renwick was going to take lead on creating it. But Rowena, with her treeborn advantage, was helping and gave him advantage. And he rolled and he wouldn't have made the role if he hadn't, hadn't been for the advantage that he got from Rowena's help. So they were busy crafting the the the, the poison. Sorry, the antidote to the poison which I told them would take a long, long time because there was some some discussion about whether they should just flee the cottage and hope to outdistance or just leave the werewolf behind. But they're like, no, we have to craft this here. We have to brew this here. So we're staying. So hence the fortifications and all that. And so then as they're watching through the windows, the, the, the a giant wolf comes out into the clearing and the wolf sees Drusilla's body laid out in front of the cottage or sees the cottage that has the wolves being around it. And I decided to roll a reaction roll, right? And uh, and I was in a base, what happens next with a werewolf on that? I was worried because a werewolf is a mighty creature and they don't have the magical weapons that they need to fight a werewolf. I mean, they had a couple of spellcasters, but yeah, it would have been rough if this thing had gone out. So at this point, I was kind of more in a mode where I felt like I was back where I like to be, which is like letting letting procedure kind of take care of a lot of the stuff. So I decided to make a reaction check for the werewolf. The werewolf rolled curious. No, not curious. I'm sorry. Ro rolled neutral on the result. So it came out, into the came into the clearing, intent on seeing Drusilla for whatever reason. Sees Drusilla lying out dead in front of the cottage. Looks at the cottage. The players see it looking in their direction. Neutral. Doesn't care one way or the other. Kind of like, you know, does the, the wolf equivalent of shrugging the shoulders. And then just goes back into the tree line. And, leaves. and that's where we ended session two. So again, I think the players had a lot of fun. Um, this is definitely proving to be a successful campaign. It's proving to be an excellent setting to play in. And as of this recording, we've run two more sessions since. Um, and I will get to, to filming those or you know making those videos soon. But from my vantage point as a game master, there are things that I did that I did not love that felt like they were too close to being scripted or railroady. I don't think I quite got on a railroad, but I don't know. I, I was beating myself up a little bit for my own process. Um, I'm beating myself up is a strong word. I was reflective about my process because I wanted to kind of do better. And the truth is that I think the next couple of sessions were better um, from my perspective. 
but I still haven't addressed some of the issues that I'm reflecting on right now, which is like fleshing out the town more fully and, and all of that, because again, I haven't had time. So, you know, anyway, this is for me, the, the shadow dark campaign is interesting because it's um, me being able to reflect on the way I usually run games, right. Which is like uh, every week we play regardless of how much time I have for prep. And we have fun because it's our way of getting together and it's our primary creative endeavor. Um, at least for me, it is. And, um, and uh, we just want to make sure that we play. Um, so sometimes that means playing under less than ideal circumstances and in less than ideal situations. And so be it. But I think it's helpful to reflect on practice when it is messy like that, when it is um, uh, um, less optimal. In that way whereas if you think about the 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 champions now game uh which doesn't have a lot of these issues that's a game where we play far less frequently um because i i i've i i'm kind of avoiding a lot of these problems by giving myself all the time that i need and the players all the time that they need to be as prepped as we need to be and as ready as we need to be and as focused as we need to be right so you know, ideal optimal situations versus more rough and tumble by the seat of your pants. It is what it is kind of situations. Maybe it's good to compare and contrast those two experiences. All right. Anyway, that's it. Um, this was a very short session and I feel like I've uh, made this video maybe longer than it needed to be, but um, I hope the reflection was in some way interesting or instructive. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm always um, interested in hearing comments and feedback. I'm very curious about the way that other people play. And so one of the reasons I put out, put I'm putting out how I play is to invite that kind of conversation. So whether it be in the comments or whether I will open up some sort of discord channel at some point so that people can have a better conversation there. I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking about those things. But in the meantime, I thank you for coming. Um, uh, again, I wish you uh, good health. I wish you good cheer. And I wish you good gaming. Goodbye.